So we launched a major project to reinvent antibodies. It turns out that's also a national initiative, and it's in fact an international initiative. So one of the things that people realize as soon as we have the sequences for all the proteins in the genome, or the genome we need to make things to recognize those proteins so we can measure them and watch them and even manipulate them. And the, tr the prospects of making 30,000 antibodies to all the proteins in the human proteome is a daunting project. There's a proposal out there in the United States to launch a project that could cost up to a billion dollars and take 10 years to make antibodies to all the proteome. I'm too impatient for that, and that's too much money. So we went about specifically to invent something, a new way to do that, and that was the SINBODY project. So we came up with this idea, and this is one of these light bulb sort of events. So, well, the traditional way is to start with a protein and make the antibody to it. What if we turn the whole thing on its head, start making an antibody, because we can make them chemically very easily, but then we'll go put it on a whole bunch of proteins and figure out what it's an antibody to. And amazingly, that simple backwards concept works. So we develop a very simple way to make a, a binding agent that works as well as an antibody, but by completely different principles. So instead of a lock and key thing, finding your target and doing it, we're saying, let's just find two little pieces that are binded on each side and link them together. You get the product of their affinity. So you get something that's very tight and very specific. And that simple principle is what allowed us to basically not use antibodies anymore to make these like so one of the biggest challenges we face is generating affinity ligands for a specific protein that not only have high affinity but are very specific for their target. And so one of the, the biggest questions that we've, we've had to overcome is how specific are the particular ligands that we develop called SIN bodies. And so we've spent a lot of time doing assays to prove that our, our, our SIN bodies are indeed specific. It's important in ligand binding studies because when you target a particular protein, you want to make sure you hit just that targeted protein and not uh, a variety of other proteins that might be nonspecific to the particular task that you're trying to accomplish. So one of the nice things about our system is that we have an, a library of proteins and we screen a particular SIN body against the library to identify its target protein from this complex mixture. Um, the process can be run on microarrays, which allow you to do multiple SIN bodies against the library of proteins in parallel. And so we can process about 20 SIN bodies a week um, using just current technologies without any further optimization. The screening process consists of taking a SIN body and attaching a, a label to it, a fluorescent molecule, for instance. And then we screen it against the library of proteins. It's printed on a protein array that has about 9,000 proteins currently. There's new generations of protein arrays that has up to about 10,000 proteins and we screen the, the SIN body against the protein array, we identify which proteins show high binding, and then from there we go through and we validate that this is indeed a high affinity interaction between the SIN body and that particular protein. So some of the common applications are for more research uh, reagents, like a, any application that an antibody is currently used in, and then we're also exploring the use of the SIN body as a therapeutic to specifically bind a target and then have some sort of biological activity.